this is how it works. A new gizmo comes along and you've got to have it. It's a status symbol. You've got to have it and the next thing again. And so it goes until it flowers and becomes ubiquitous. And then suddenly, of course, things turn. And now the status symbol is not to have it, right? To try and escape from the ubiquity of the Blackberry and the related devices. Well, I've asked Gregory Harper to come out here because I've never met a man more enthusiastic about gadgets, which means he's my kind of a guy. And Gregory, <laughs> at my invitation, has brought just a few things that he not only uh, collects but actually uses freely and um, in a kind of normal way in the pursuit of his life. Gregory Harper, take it away. <laughs> Following me through um, security is not a good idea. <laughs> Although at this time when I came in from LaGuardia, I warned the uh, security people that I had a few gadgets with me and the guy went right through it and asked a question, so I don't know. Anyway, um, I do this uh, normally with a lot more time than 20 minutes, so we're going to do a fast round of gadgets. If any of you have any real questions about them afterwards, please come and see me uh, after the, uh, the talk. Basically, uh, I've always been interested in cutting edge of technology, and I'm very good friends with the UPS man, the FedEx man, and uh, I basically feel that if I'm going to understand technology, which is what I do for a living, then I really have to experience it. So every day, literally every day, new stuff shows up. And I brought some of the things that are interesting, some that are useful, some that are not so useful, some that have a story to them, some that are just, well, just crazy. And um, this is what I could put in my suitcase. Some of the things are back home. So a couple of themes. The first theme is production. Now you see the people running around with the video cameras here, and they're running around with cameras that cost anywhere from forty to $70,000. And they run um, uh, NTSC video, that's 40i uh, technology. But I'm holding here a high definition camera that's much better quality than these cameras. Um, cost a fraction of the cost. And oh, by the way, does 14 bit processing where these things only do 10. I know this because I used to own a video production company and I bought a lot of these things around. But the difference is that when you're doing it for the consumer world, you can make millions of them. So you can build chips that will allow these cameras to happen. So just think about it for a second. All of a sudden, I'm carrying in my hand here, which I carry with almost all the time, a camera that has a higher quality than the camera that's being used to shoot me right now. And this tied in with a production capability and a post-production capability. I had an edit suite that cost me three and a half million dollars. I now have that same edit suite, except in high definition, in my home for 35,000. That's what's happened in less than eight years. Now, it's not just in video that this is happening. It's also happening in audio. This device here is a super bitmap, high definition audio recorder with microphone, mind you. Um, dual microphones, match microphones. This thing, if I had wanted to carry this around with me only about three years ago, it would have been a console bigger than this entire uh, table that I'm using. This thing records at 24 bit, 192 kilohertz. For those in the audiophile world, this is SACD quality, and it's just sitting in the palm of my hand. But it's not just the high-end pieces that are there. Also, you know, there's the whole world of podcasting. And so now you can buy a podcast factory or an audio recording studio in a box at the store. And you say, what do you get in the box? Well, we open the box up. You get what you might expect, some software. But not only do so you get software, but they also give you a professional microphone. They give you a microphone cable. And they give you an interface to your computer. And with these three things, all of a sudden, you are building your own radio station in a box sold at the corner store. I don't know how many years ago, this would again, a huge console. It's fully professional, <laughs> XLR connectors, et cetera. But then you say, OK, so that's kind of fun. But then how do you consume that stuff? How would you possibly want to use it? Well, let me show you how I fly in an airplane. Um, first of all, I have what most people have these days, a pair of Bose noise-canceling headphones. Very nice, cancel the noise out. But I'm an audiophile. If I have that high-quality audio device, you might imagine I like high-quality, high-definition audio. So these just don't cut it. So what have I done? 
First thing I do is I had a pair of headphones made with custom ears. These are the custom earbuds that are molded to my ears. So they go in here and they put a perfect fit. And because the output of your iPod isn't really high quality, I carry with me a high quality audiophile amplifier, which gives me audio that's equivalent to what you'd expect from your home stereo system. And then I connect that to um, not the audio output of the iPod, because the audio output of the iPod that comes to normal is just isn't higher quality. This connects the bottom, so I get the line out, and I plug this together. So I stick this on here, put these little ear puns in, and then, because I don't want to hear any noise, I put this on top of it. <laughs> but wait, as they say in the commercials, there's more. I also like video, right? I had a camera. So what do I do for video? Well, I have this. And this is my video screen. So now you imagine me on the plane <laughs> with these things coming out of my ears. <laughs> with my headphones on top like this. So I'll stick these into here. I can't, don't have time to put them in, but you get the idea. Watching my video, and I'm very happy. And I have very high quality. Of course, I look like a real geek. <laughs> and I can't hear anything you're saying because I've got these headphones on, but <laughs> I did this on a plane coming back from, um, from London. And the flight attendant came over and said, what do you got there? And I showed them, wow, that's really cool. Next flight attendant, next flight attendant. Then the co-pilot came out. Then the pilot came out. And I went, wait a minute, wait a minute. Who's flying the airplane? And then every single person anywhere near me all said, excuse me, sir, can I try those? Can I try those? By the time the flight was over, the batteries were dead, and I never got to watch my movie. <laughs> so there, 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 is a, there is a challenge in being at the cutting edge of technology. You all have heard of USB thumb drives? Well, I thought we should really have a USB thumb drive. This is my USB thumb drive. Oh, I think it's brilliant. Absolutely step out of your ivory tower and come and see things that are out of your um, sector, your business, everything that you do every day. It's just, it's, your brain's on fire. <laughs> Some of the things I get are just pure crazy and just useless. Like, for example, you all have heard of USB thumb drives? Well, I thought we should really have a USB thumb drive. <laughs> this is my USB thumb drive. <laughs> it's a uh, memory wave king. But, you know, just plain old thumb drives aren't so fun. How about a duck drive? Or if you don't like the duck drive, how about USB sushi? Uh, <laughs> again, these are things that you can use to get data coming out of the, uh, uh, your computer. Um, but you know, USB is an interesting little capability. It has useful capabilities. Like for example, you can use this little device that you put on your laptop, which will allow you to color correct your screen so that in, when you're looking at photos, when you shoot the photos, what you get is what you really get. And what you see is what you really get. This little, do little device does that. Well, that's useful. But you know, this is probably more useful. I've been told to be, call be sure to call this a massager, not a vibrator. But this is, in fact, a USB massager. You plug it in and it runs down your thing. <laughs> in fact, if you like, well, uh, I won't do it now. <laughs> of course, when I'm lonesome at Christmas time, I have my USB snowwoman. You plug it in, and it lights up. But you know. USB things need to be more, more practical. This one is really practical. This is a USB beer cooler. You stick your beer can on here, you plug in a USB port. Now, of course, if you're having beer, you might have chips. Chips and computers don't mix. So what do you need? Well, how about your USB vacuum cleaner? <laughs> uh, it comes with uh, different attachments, which uh, I'm not sure. Oh, yes, here. It's a different attachments. You see, this, you can pull the tops off in different nozzles. This is my, <laughs> my USB vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Again, kind of fun stuff. Of course, if I've got a not-so-friendly mind, um, this one is scary. This is a USB card reader. Uh, this swipes your credit card information, puts it in. These are being used by criminals, of course. They stick them on ATMs, and they grab your thing. Or, in fact, the, um, the people in restaurants use it and get an extra swipe on here. Pulls all the information off your credit card. Uh, so there are some things that USB does that aren't always the greatest thing in the world. But, uh, or if I'm also in the music business, uh, this device is a scary device for the music industry. Uh, you plug one iPod into this side, and you plug the iPod into the other iPod into this side, and you press the little button in the middle, and it sucks all the data from one to the other. It's a nice little USB 
uh, piracy device. <laughs> Speaking of piracy devices, here's another little device that scares the pants off of Hollywood. Um, this is called the Neuros. You say, well, little black box, what does this do? This is what's being sold in Asia at uh, any store. Um, basically, you plug your TV into here, and you put your memory card into here, and whatever program you can watch, whether it's a DVD, protected or not, it will simply copy and put onto your portable device. So I can use my PSP here, and I can watch movies on it, or in fact, any other portable device will do it. This copy protection, what's that? This thing doesn't care about it, it just eliminates it. Uh, we can get into a whole discussion about where DRM and copy protection is. But even more crazy, this is a complete media center PC. Yes, a complete media center PC. It's got a 100 gig hard drive in it. It's got high definition video out. It's got multi-channel sound out. It's controlled by a remote control, like any other remote control you might have. It will run as part of your PC, or it will run standalone. And I can put DVDs in here, and the software they give you rips the DVDs in their full quality, exactly the same as if you put a DVD in. That's what's happening here. Um, again, this is what's changing things. Speaking of DVDs, and if we can uh, get the, uh, the screen up here for a second, that would help. Um, if I can, uh, oh, I've, oh, I'm sorry, I have to put the screen up here. So, um, external monitor here. So, in a second here, some of the things I can't bring with me, and uh, this is one of them, and hopefully there is a screen image up here. Yes, um, what you're seeing here is a link into our house. And you can see that I have 1,127 movies uh, stored on the various servers. You know, it wasn't too long ago that a terabyte of data storage was considered a lot. Well, this is multiple terabytes of storage. There are now devices made by like, a company called Buffalo, which actually is a fully RAID, fully capable uh, storage system that will allow you to store your movies. So we can go in here and pick a movie. And uh, you say, well, you know, OK, so you can pick a movie, so big deal. So what is going to happen is I am now going to my home in New York City, and I'm asking the system to uh, find out what movies we have. Uh, my server is called Harper Media. I will go into the command system here, and I'll get my remote. And I'll be able to, in a very few seconds, not only select any movie, but actually watch it here in uh, Toronto remotely using the internet. Again, assuming the internet is going to work for me here, which it appears it is not. Well, You'll have to trust me. Uh, it was working just fine prior to this. But unfortunately, when they moved the table, they must have knocked it out. But you know, I have 1,127 movies, as you saw. Xor Hollywood doesn't want to um, uh, doesn't want to keep me happy with that, because they've created something new. In this hand, I have the HD DVD, high definition DVD. This is a DVD in high definition. That's one format. But of course, the wonderful guys in Hollywood didn't think one was good enough. They came out with a second system. This is Blu-ray. These are two giant battles. And they're going out tonight, right now, see if they can battle, and see which one of you wants to spend $1,000 to buy either A or B, and then replace your entire library. So 1,100 movies times $20 a movie, you can understand where Hollywood thinks is a good idea. They're going to make me buy all my movies again. Of course, the one big advantage of the HD DVD is that um, this is not a great title, obviously, but the reason I have it is because this is the first one. This is HD DVD and DVD combo format, which means it's running both HD and regular standard DVD. So I could actually put this into a standard DVD player and watch it, not in high definition, of course, or I could stick in my high definition and see it. Now, you might ask, is it any good? Does it really make a difference when you watch HD DVD on a DVD player? The answer is, it is unbelievably good. <laughs> it, is, it is, in fact, what the Hollywood is worried about for the movie theaters, which is why they're releasing not great titles right now. Because if this comes out, it really, the experience at home starts to become one that's equally equal to the experience that you might have in a movie theater. I do really like my hands-free device. Yes, it really is hooked to my cell phone. And believe it or not, it does work better. It's quite an interesting mix that I do think provokes people to think about things not just about what's coming next in terms of technology or what they need to do, but how the two things actually offset against each other. But it's not just Hollywood that's doing things that are interesting. You might ask, uh, what's this? Well, this is a little device 
and I'm going to connect up here. And as you can see, it's a webcam. But it's a webcam that has another capability, and that is that it's a webcam that I can also remote control. And I have this normally at home, so I hit the button here, and uh, there goes my webcam running across the stage. So you see you can have your uh, devices. Uh, it runs on a new technology. You've heard of Wi-Fi, you've heard of WiMAX. This is called Zigbee. This is going to be used for a lot of different devices. I should probably turn this off before it uh, <laughs> runs off the stage here. <laughs> we'll back it up. <laughs> or even rotate it. Anyway, that's your, that's your webcam. But um, you know, we were talking about Blackberries before. Um, this is my first Blackberry. And it was given to me by the gentleman who just spoke to you beforehand. Um, it's about, I think it's about 10 years ago when this came out. Believe it or not, before the speech, I decided, no, I'll put a battery in and see if it works. Thing still works. But since the Blackberry has happened, we've, a lot of things have happened. I carry a few devices with me. Um, <laughs> um, this is the Nokia uh, E61. It's a Blackberry type device. They didn't get the keyboard right. There's no scroll wheel. But it does work in Japan at high speed data. Kind of nice. This is the Motorola Q. They tried to get it right. They put the scroll wheel on the side. But then somebody decided that the scroll wheel, unlike the Blackberry, if you're going to use it, it only goes down one me menu deep. And as you may, those of you who use Blackberry know you can go multiple layers deep. So beautiful design, terrible software. So forget that device. <laughs> then there are the guys at Palm. And they have this. And they came out with a high-speed version of the Palm 700, uh, 650. It's called the Palm 700P. Um, nice, except you still got to use your fingers to do things with it. Not so great. Of course, <laughs> then there's the, the Microsoft version of it, which uh, opens up like this, a little bit too bulky. At the end of the day, what do I use? I use my BlackBerry. <laughs> <laughs> And that's not, and it's not because I'm in Canada. It's not because uh, the founder of the company is here. It's just better. Somebody here actually thought about it. Somebody actually figured out how to make uh, getting mail and information very good. Now I'm going to show you one little thing that this BlackBerry does that some of you may or may not know. But you know these things have location capabilities on it. And if there's a camera that can take a picture of this uh, for you, you can see. <laughs> Hold it here. <laughs> If you, um, if, you put the cam if you put the picture up here, you will notice that what you have here, if you can zoom in, is actually a uh, photograph from a satellite of where we are right now. I just tossed my back where I said, where am I? I said, here, show me a picture. It'll do directions too. So this will do GPS capabilities. This is what's coming down the folks, folks, coming down the pike, folks. Now, this is not the only device that does this. Connectivity for devices. Is, uh, is happening in a lot of different ways. Um, for example, there are going to be cameras, in the, uh, still cameras. This one has not one of them. I brought this one for another reason. Still cameras are going to have GPS in it, so they'll know where it took the picture. Now, which company is doing that? The company that's doing that is Kodak, some guys that I thought I'd almost given up for lost. These guys have now figured out how to put GPS capability into their cameras along with image recognition. So I'll give you an example of what this thing can do. I take a picture of uh, a birthday. It has facial or object recognition and says, ah, that's supposed to be a birthday cake. It'll ask you, you know, how many of you guys have digital cameras? Probably most of you. How many of you have mm, 10,000 photos in your library? And they're all cataloged, right? They're all organized by date and by name. I mean, all perfectly put in folders. Well, guess what? The guys at Kodak said, eh, that doesn't work too well. And what they decided to do was to put technology behind it. And so they look and they recognize birthday cake. They look at the location. They look at the time. They say, ah, it's on uh, uh, June 23rd. It must be a birthday. And so therefore, it says whose birthday it is. And then every year, whenever it sees a picture of the birthday cake on that day, it says, ah, that must be Susan's birthday. And it will automatically catalog it. There's an awful lot of information you can tell if you know where the picture was taken, what it's done. Think about it. Cameras sit in your, in, on your shelf, don't get used, and all of a sudden they all get used for a period of time. It's probably those pictures are related. 
Now, if there's a picture of Disneyland in there, that's a trip to Disney World. If it's in the summer, if it's in the winter, it might be skiing. You can figure an awful lot out, and that's what the guys at Kodak are doing. The guys at Canon, meanwhile, are putting in optical stabilization. So when I shake the camera, it doesn't shake anymore. So some things like that are happening that are changing things quite a bit. But of course, other things are a little bit less high tech. This is something my wife really likes. It's an audio book. Not an audio book you load in your iPod and have to figure out how to do it. It's all self-contained. The nice thing about this, when I finish my book, I can give it to somebody else. It runs it's the entire audio book. You just buy it, you plug your headphone in, it's got a little, a little keypad on here, you can actually go back to your chapters. This is, gives you your audio book. No, no fuss, no downloading, no accounts. Go to the store, buy it, put your headphones in, it comes with headphones, off you go. Now, and I see that we have, uh, I'm running out of time, but uh, you know, some of the things are, are still good. <laughs> I, I do really like my hands-free device. Yes, it really is hooked to my cell phone. And believe it or not, it does work better than some of the other devices. And then, and in closing, this is a chocolate bar, not any old chocolate bar. This is a chocolate bar that has RFID, so it knows where it is. It's a lot of things are happening that are kind of fun. And then very, very, very quickly, this is the device that goes in my car. It gives me Wi-Fi access when you drive down the highway. It's got license, the ESSID is my license plate number. So if you're driving down the street and you see YS21 as an access point, follow it. You'll have internet access. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is e-books, digital ink. This is ink that is actually on here. This is reflective. There's no backlight on here. And you can see, you can read this from here. This is the future of newspapers. Anyway, there's a lot more here. I could go on for a lot more, uh, like even my, my virtual keyboards. But you know what? This is my keyboard on my thing here, or my ID that doubles as my ID that doubles as a Bluetooth device here on the side. A lot of different things. Anyway, thank you. Hey.